Let's make it a good day. Coming up today, Jon Stewart is heading back to TV and Zach Morris is heading back to Bayside. We have it all in the hot dish. Then our foodie queen, Stephanie Hansen, is back with Croctober. Can't miss recipes for your slow cooker. Plus, Steph is giving us her best things ever. And how Nutter Butters was this week's episode of The Bachelorette? I'm ashamed to be associated with you. Producer Ted has his recap. Here we go. Let's make it a good day. tell you from our studios in the Twin Cities. Hi. Thanks for spending a little bit of your morning with us. Please put your hands together on your couch for my good friend, the lovely and talented Kendall. Hi. Good Hi. morning, Kendall. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. I mean, even if you're sitting on the floor, you can clap too. Once again, you know, one of the great little pleasures of my life is when you inadvertently match the set. And today's one of those days. Your top matches the blue behind you. Why, thank you. Thank you. It's the little things in life. It's the little things. Just the little things that make you happy. Mm -hmm. Like a really good crouton in a salad. Oh, Seriously. That's so true. Homemade so, crouton. Oh, it, it, am I not right? Yeah. Ruby Tuesday, before they all basically all closed, had those uh, pumpernickel, the black bread. Uh, mm -hmm. What is it? Is it rye? I don't know. They had, yeah, I think rye. Yeah, right. they had uh, these delicious on their salad bar, the, these delicious croutons. I could have eaten a plate of them. But Did you ever? Anyway, let's say hello to our audience today. I know, ironically, I know both of them for years. Super fan Heather is to my right. Hello, sweetheart. Hi. We miss you, sweetie. We're, it's so good to see you. I miss you guys, too. Heather joins us. She's like family. She joins us in the studio audience several times each season. Now, the woman to the left, I have known since 1997. It's Terrell, everybody. Hi, sweetheart. Don't date me. Jason. I won't. No, you're only, I don't know how that's physically possible. You're only 29. So we met when we were very young, right, sweetie? Very. Yes, very young. Okay, well. Very, very young. Well, I have no fear that both of you will have a lot to say. So stay right there. They're going to chime in throughout the, the, the show. Speaking of uh, audience, I want to say thank you. You guys, uh, uh, executive producer Jeff just handed me, uh, more cards are still coming in for, for Dar, for my mom. Really? Yeah, and it's just, uh, I've said it now 7,000 times. Thank you so much. I mean, people are just, my mother's had such a great Minnesota welcome. People have been so nice sending her like Target gift cards and stuff for Radar, her dinosaur <laughs> slash dog. But thanks to Janice Lickner, uh, Joyce Ann Johnson, and uh, Christine Lout uh, sending me cards today. You guys are just so nice, and I know Dar appreciates it. And again, eventually when she gets settled, you know, and 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 we're, we wrap up everything in Louisiana, she'll be on the show and she'll go back to her goofy self. Speaking of Dar, oh gosh, guess what I got her addicted to? I have no idea. Showtime's Dexter. One oh! Of the, one of the mm. best shows ever on television. She's watching it now. She's probably not even watching the show today. Probably I not. bet she's watching Dexter. She's not even watching the show, but uh, she's obs oh, already obsessed. Have you seen so it? Good. Yeah, I used to watch it back in the day. Yeah. Um, I never watched the final season, though. Um, you're not miss. Uh, the final season's all right, but one of the best seasons of television is season four of Dexter when John Lithgow is the guest star. I won't ruin it, but just know that season four of Dexter is one of the best seasons of television in any decade. Period. So if you only want to watch one season, that's the one to watch. Yeah, you kind of have to build up, though. Oh, Because okay. it, you, you, it's the emotional investment that you have in the characters which makes season four so powerful. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. I won't see Dar when season four rolls around. She won't leave her house. <laughs> She'll just be stuck in bed. She'll be stuck in bed. <laughs> I did something, Kendall, today that I've never done in 46 years on Earth. I would love to hear how this went. I lost a bet, and I had to eat cottage cheese for the first time in my life. And I got to tell you, we were talking about foods I can't stand. I can't stand raisins. I don't know why raisins exist. I don't like them in cookies. I don't like them in anything. Don't ever give me an oatmeal raisin. I think oatmeal raisin cookies are the worst variety of cookie. 
I do not like raisins. Okay, write uh, that down. People. And then uh, I don't like cottage. I don't. I cottage cheese scared me. But I lost a bet on the radio show. So this morning, live on the radio station's website, I ate cottage cheese for the first time. How'd it go? How did it go? You ask. Yeah. Disgusting. I don't know how anybody eats cottage cheese. The texture. I couldn't even get it. I had to swallow real hard to get it down my throat. Oh. I did not enjoy the texture at all. Did you put onions in it like Jeff told you to? I know our executive producer, he, <laughs> he puts ham in it. He puts uh, <laughs> onions. He puts paprika. He, put, he puts fruit. He puts veggies. He, he loves puts the tuna. And, and I don't care what you put in this stuff. It's awful. It's just awful. And mm. I like cheese. This isn't cheese. This is curdled uh, 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 bubbles of something. I don't know. Okay. You want to know how you would like cottage cheese? In the garbage can? No, on top of mashed potatoes. You're welcome. They're really good that way. Terrell is saying yes, and I love Terrell See? up until. See? See, I love Terrell, and now I don't, I'm not so sure. Mm -hmm. Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Here we go, everybody. <laughs> the hot dish, complete with absolutely no cottage cheese. Do you eat lasagna? With yeah, cottage I do. Cheese? Yeah, no, not with cottage cheese. Oh, okay. How dare you? Well, it's lasagna a very cheap with way. Lasagna with cottage cheese? This is the very Minnesotan way to do it. It's really? Cheaper. Yeah. I've never heard that before. Instead of in my ricotta, life. you use cottage cheese. Oh, my aunt is like. Italian, 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 Italian. She would slap me across the face like moonstruck. Well, now you're ever. in Minnesota, so you I can know. do it that way. Let's get started. It's a moment fans of The Daily Show have been waiting a long time for. Jon Stewart's coming back to TV, y'all. That's right. Jon's signed a deal with Apple to host a new Current Affairs series. There actually was a show called The Current Affair back in the 80s. Uh, we don't know a lot about it, friends. Here's the deal. But we do know it'll be an hour long. And it'll feature single subject episodes, similar to John Oliver over there on HBO. And Apple made the deal real sweet, like a honey crisp, and gave Stewart what they call a first look deal for other projects with Apple. What does that mean? What does what mean, my love? The first, the first oh, look deal? So, uh, okay, what it means is future product, projects with John, he gives Apple the right of first refusal. Oh. So let's say he comes up with another show about an animated otter who, who has a magic mouth. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. He, can, he has to bring the magic otter mouth show to Apple. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. That's what it means. I kind of, you know, like here, I would, if I yeah. had that kind of deal, they barely want me to do this show, let alone a, a first look deal. I would have to bring all ideas to Fox. But that's pretty Cool, that's pretty, oh, I mean, that doesn't a, happen often, right? Oh, it happens with people like Jon Stewart and Shonda Rhimes and, and Lauren Michaels. And you okay. know what I mean? Lauren Michaels had it with NBC back in the 80s. That's the reason why Lauren Michaels is the executive producer of every late night show on NBC. <laughs> but but no, it's a it's what they call a sweetener to a contract. Cool. You know, okay, we're going to give you this and such salary, and here's a sweetener. We're going to give you a first look deal, and we're going to give you a car, and a motorcycle, and a masseuse named Tony, you know? Oh, Tony, he's great. But I love this. This is perfect for John, uh, because I think John really likes to dig into things. And when you only have one show to turn weekly, like John Oliver, you can dig into a subject. Mm -hmm. And this is great for Apple. This is a good name, you know, a good get for Apple. Yeah, people which, have missed him. Which they need, because mm -hmm. no one's watching Apple Plus. No one. Not even me, and I love Apple. <laughs> Next in the dish, fans of Kim Kardashian West are accusing her of being tone deaf following her 40th birthday party. But it wasn't just any birthday party. On Twitter, she wrote, after two weeks of multiple health scares, or screens rather, and asking everyone to quarantine, I surprised my closest inner circle with a trip to a private island where we could pretend things were normal just for a brief moment in time. Well, as you can imagine, as you can imagine, the internet didn't like it and said bragging about the trip was inappropriate. Here's my, uh, okay, let's first go to the audience and let's see. Terrell, uh, yeah. what, what do you think? People, the, the people on the internet, they say it's inappropriate to be bragging about such a thing in 2020. What do you think? I do believe it's not fair to brag about it, but I personally don't care because as you know me very well, I kind of live in my own private island in my mind anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it's a lovely place to be, by the way, Terrell. It's a lovely island, yes. Okay, Heather, Heather, my love, do you think it's inappropriate? Yes. Do you think it's inappropriate to brag about a fancy birthday party? Like Terrell, I really don't care. 
<laughs> Again, see, I love when the audience members cut to the chase, like my friend Heather. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll go yeah. back. The ladies are sticking around all hour. Here's my take. I think generally, uh, and you know I'm not a fan of Kim K. I'm not here to, to support, I'm not here to defend her, but who cares? And, and a, lot of, a lot of us, we would do it if we had the money. If I had the money, I'm telling you the truth. If I had that kind of stupid money, because that's stupid money. When you can rent an island, that's ridiculous stupid money. If I could do that for my family and friends, like my friend, my best friend Jen's having a birthday this weekend. We're doing something very low key and safe. But if I could, if I had the means to fly Jen to an island, I would. You can't bemoan people for success, you know? And I think we have a, we have a problem with doing that sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think we, we hold it against people for being successful. And I think a little bit of that comes from jealousy. If you examine it, I think a, there's a little bit of jealousy in there. And she looks so good. She does. So that's part of it, too. I mean, it has to be, Yeah. <laughs> honestly. Well, I wish I looked that good at 40, because, again, I'm not loving the 40s. <laughs> Oprah lied to me. Uh, lots more to come. We'll be back right after this. Stay with us, everyone. More fun, more hot dishes coming up next. I mean, I always knew Dallas was one of the most influential shows in TV history, but wait until you hear how influential. Then it's Crocktober. Get out your slow cookers, because Stephanie Hansen is here with some of her favorite recipes. And we are coming to the end of Claire's time on The Bachelorette, but she's not going out on a whimper. Mm -mm -mm. Do not ever talk to me like that. Ted has the recap. The big bombshell is that next week, Claire is expected to grab Dale and leave the show, which leaves us with a big question. Who will ABC tap to finish out the season? Next week on The Bachelorette. The path we're on right now, it doesn't end well. You've just blown up The Bachelorette. <laughs> Claire's gone, and I still haven't like fully comprehended what the hell's going on. What's up? Oh, the man himself. Hey, have a seat, have a seat. Congratulations. My husband is in this room. <laughs> Everything was like great, and then it just went. <laughs> Doesn't seem to make sense to me right now. I'm gonna freak the <laughs> out. What the <laughs> just happened? Is that good? You doing, man? Good. How are you? Uh, I know I'm not the dinner date you were expecting, but you mind if I have a seat for a second? Please do. I mean, I'm confused as all hell. I am so happy to say it's finally time to get this show going. <laughs> fantastic. Okay, Kimmel. Great editing there. Oh, that was fantastic. There's Terrell and uh, our friend Heather there, our virtual audience with us the whole hour. Jimmy Kimmel, breaking news about who will replace Claire. That's the Bachelorette. <laughs> Producer Ted, by the way, will have a full recap of last night's events, the shocking events, a little bit later in the show. But more late night for you. Here's a name we haven't said in a while. Wynonna Judd. Uh-huh. She was on with Andy Cohen last night, and a fan asked her a question about another country legend, Garth Brooks. Listen. Hey, Wynonna. Quick question. What do you remember about Garth Brooks opening for the Judds? back in the day. And did you ever think that he would be the biggest name person in country music? I can tell you a story about my mom. She came up to me after a show and said, you know, I like Garth and he's sweet. I don't think he's gonna make it. And I've never forgotten that. He opened for us and he was so polite. I remember being irritated because I thought he was so nice and I wanted to be like that. And he carried a possum around. I thought that was interesting. Wow. <laughs> okay. uh, so he grew up near Kendall. <laughs> no, Daddy, shoot that snake. We had a possum problem too, in case you're wondering. Did you? Yeah. Don't you want to be known before you die as the as that guy that carries around a possum around the neighborhood? They're so creepy too. They're, well, they're hideously ugly, but then, but yet cute. They're one of those really, Ugly, cute animals. Have you ever watched them play dead and then get up and move? Because that's not cute. No, we had. Uh, you really <laughs> were bored as a child, weren't you? <laughs> I was. <laughs> Come on, sis, let's go watch the possums play dead. 
<laughs> it's, it's what you do. <laughs> we had toys in Indiana. That's what we did. We, 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 I played with toys. You had Atari. I had, well, a, I had Atari. No, I didn't remember. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't quite that spoiled. <laughs> Next in the dish, we're getting closer to the debut of the Save by the Bell reboot on NBC's Peacock. You know, that's their streaming service. Well, a trailer just dropped, and for the first time, we're actually seeing the gang all back together. Well, except for Screech, who's busy doing other types of movies. Uh, take a look. Yo, Mama. Sorry, Dr. Mama. How do you think this year's gonna go for these new students? I'm psyched. You're excited for the first day of school? Let's go. Why is everybody so rich? Are you ready for my party Saturday night? I got DJ Khaled's baby to make you a playlist. It's okay. Time out. What is up with these kids? Yeah. Yeah. In attendance will be the governor of California. Max, dad? You look amazing and your hair's fire. My dad's also coming. I don't care about your dad, Spencer. I just care about Zach and Kelly. We all want these new kids to feel welcome. Let's see what half is. Can we talk? Did you just sit backwards in a chair? Wow, I've never seen anyone do that in real life. This is a really big deal for Gen <laughs> Xers like me. This, this is what I call like a pop culture touchstone for us. Every Saturday on NBC, we watch Saved by the Bell. Zach, Kelly, Slater, and Jesse are all back, but now they're grown-ups. They're, they're my age. It's okay, Jason. It debuts... <laughs> Oprah, you lied to me. It debuts <laughs> uh, November 25th. Hey, I don't like reboots normally, uh, and I've, I've busted on this before, but I will let me give it a compliment. You can tell by that trailer, the writing is a little snappy. You know, it's, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's fresh, and you yeah. can tell it's written by one of the producers of 30 Rock. It has a similar pace to it. Do you not agree? No, I agree, because I, I really like Saved by the Bell. I watched... Yeah, I you watched the, the reruns. reruns. Yes, yeah, I yeah. did. Okay. Um, but I, So I was kind of like you. It didn't sound that exciting, but this, I like how they have the twist of, how are all these kids rich? Like, wait yeah. a minute, all that talking to the camera stuff, I always think that's really funny. Yeah, I love mm -hmm. it. I'm, I'm actually going to watch it. I don't know if I'm going to watch the whole season. I'm going to watch the premiere. Yeah, I mean, just that. I want to stare at Mark Paul Gosseler. He's <laughs> aged really well. He really has. <laughs> Next in the dish. So you guys know most talk shows that are back are, are doing new episodes. Uh, they're doing it without a studio audience like ours. Hello, COVID. Well, a less, uh, less than a month after returning for season 18, The Ellen Show is bringing back the audience. Starting actually today, 40 fans will be seated in the audience alongside 70 virtual attendees. The show says they'll be following strict COVID protocols. Now, it comes in uh, in time for their Halloween episode where usually, you know, Ellen goes all out. I was wondering when the first talk show, what talk show would be, which one would do this? Because uh, you're going to have to figure out a way to do it eventually. You know, for smaller shows like ours, you know, season six, we, we will not have an audience. It'll, it'll be probably sometime in, in season seven. Uh, but for big national shows that have an eight bazillion dollar budget, uh, uh, you know, that can do health, health protocols, you know, if you can do it safely and the audience doesn't care and they're safe, why not? Right, and I think we talked about this a little bit before, like the ratings for her show aren't great, so maybe this is not as good as they used to be. So maybe this is a way to bring that back up in their mind? I don't know. Yeah, well, and you know, look, I, I, miss, I miss the energy. Uh, you know, I can speak to this directly. I miss the energy that you get from a studio audience. Totally. Um, I've told the story many times when we were developing the show, uh, and we're real proud of this, Fox, understandably, was leery about having a studio audience. Mm -hmm. um, we had none of our station uh, stations in our in our company had ever done anything like our show, so we didn't have a system in place. We didn't have any we audience department. What we barely, you know what I mean? So we did it, but we there. It's such a benefit, you know. I and we wanted to do it every day, and I think you know the the results speak for itself. But we're doing really good now because until then we have a virtual audience like Terrell and uh, and Heather. Terrell, you, I'm sure you've watched shows with these virtual audiences, with these, uh, you know, with the computer screens. Do you miss a studio audience with these types of shows? Not really for myself, but I can understand um, going into something live makes a huge difference because you do get that energy from the audience. Um, but as far as that, I mean, maybe the dancing in the audience that you see sometimes or yeah, I just don't miss it. And I think it's great that they are offering that opportunity to have the virtual. And this is really fun, by the way. Well, I, um, I'm, believe me, I'm loving. I walked in the studio and I saw both of you. I'm like, I know both of our audience members today. <laughs> and Heather, I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. You miss coming here, don't you? 
Yes, I do. I know. I my hug. I know. Uh, you will be one of the first people I hug when we're on the, when we're on the other side of this. Guarantee you. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you, sweetheart. Next up, it could be the craziest story of the month involving the fall of the Soviet Union, the <laughs> 80s band, the, uh, the Eurythmics, and a certain primetime soap. Listen to this. The guy who co-founded the Eurythmics with Annie Lennox, David Stewart, was recently interviewed on singer Joss Stone's podcast and said that former Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev believed a certain American TV show led to the collapse of his country. Which show led to the collapse? This show. By the way, that's my least favorite version of the theme song out of all 16. But anyway, uh, that's right, my beloved Dallas. Stewart said Gorbachev had a theory about the show and with wealth and success and power and how the show showed that. And it helped lead the collapse of the Soviet Union because Russians dreamed of living in the U.S. and being like the Ewings. Get this, the show made its way to Russia after someone snuck in a VHS tape, like into Moscow or something. Here, here's a, when Bobby gets run over, you know? But it doesn't surprise me. I've heard this before, obviously, because there's very few things about Dallas I don't know. Mm-hmm. Dallas was also one of the first American television shows in 1989 to be allowed to film in Red Square in Moscow. And in the behind the scenes footage, they are, they are greeted as almost like legends as heroes Mm -hmm. because the Russians looked at the life and they thought all of us lived like JR and Sue Ellen. I mean, I really like to live like Sue Ellen. I mean, right. Falling drunk into a pool. I mean, (laughs) seriously ruining every family event. Yes. Yes. Great. But anyway, I mean, the Soviet Union likes to blame us, liked to blame us for the collapse of them. But this is a new spin. I hadn't heard Dallas of all things. Yep. Dallas. Somewhere in heaven, Larry Hagman is smiling. <laughs> Next in the dish, more changes coming to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. We're learning about two new additions to the show. Crystal Kung Minkoff is getting her diamond. She is the wife of Rob Minkoff. Now you're thinking, okay, what's the big deal? Well, you'll see. They got married 13 years ago and have two children. She is the co-founder, the founder rather, of a coconut-based food company. She will become the first Asian American to join the franchise. Also joining the cast, is Kathy Hilton, the mother of Paris Hilton. She will be what they refer to as a friend of the cast. Now, this comes as Denise Richards and Teddy Mellencamp, bah, they left the show. So Crystal is a big deal. Her husband is also a big deal. He directed movies like Stuart Little. Uh, He's a big time movie director. She is a success on her own right. And again, it's about representation, about Mm -hmm. time. There's an Asian American because hello, there are Asian people in Beverly Hills. Yeah, yeah. rich Asian people. Yeah, there's so, a movie about it too. Yeah, I love it. I love, I love that. Really cool. There's going to be a more diverse cast in that show. Finally, we're finally like moving this ball on many different aspects of life. I'm just shocked that Kathy's joining because that family uh, has been wrecked by that show. Kyle's other sister, Kim, was on seasons one through four, and it wrecked the relationship. The only and seasons Kathy, I watched. And Kathy and Kyle Richards have not had an easy go at it. So I can't believe she signed on the dotted line. I wonder what kind of little perks, perks. they're giving Kathy. Well, Paris has like been back in the news lately too. So I don't know if they're just trying to get the family back in the news. Maybe. I still love Simple Life. One of the best shows ever on our <laughs> network. Seriously, it really, ever, it, ever on Fox, in Fox's history. 21 Jump Street, uh, uh, Married with Children, Simple Life. <laughs> Simple Life. And Simpsons. And the Jason Show. I'm going to go with any NFL game of ever. Ugh, I don't even know what that means. Still ahead, Claire's quest for love continues, but hits a bit of a bump in the road. Producer Ted is back with a recap of The Bachelorette. But next, you're going to love this. Get that, get the paper ready, everybody, and your pen. Coming up, getting a little chilly outside, and that means it's crock pot season. Stephanie Hansen is back with her uber famous recipes. That's next. Stay with us. October. It's, look, it's Carol and Heather, everybody. I was absolutely appalled at 
the group date that occurred yesterday. And there's naked guys, you know, doing or playing dodgeball together. It's so humiliating and degrading. And I don't see how that really translates into finding a husband, like who's willing to strip down butt naked and play dodgeball. It mm -hmm. seems very silly and very immature. Mm -hmm. So appalled, a completely classless display. Mm -hmm. I expected a lot more from the oldest bachelorette that's ever been. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't believe, I can't believe that that actually occurred. That's not the type of example I want set for my daughter. You're not setting the right example for my daughter. Like, I feel like I even have to explain now. I'm, a, like, I'm ashamed to be associated with you. Do not ever talk to me like that. I never thought I'd ever have to tell any man that I would never want them being the father of my child. And I stand by that. I would never want my children having a father like you. Get out of here. Claire. Wow. Wow. I don't even know what to say. Actually, I do. Claire's quest to find love hits a bit of a speed bump last night as she and Yosef go toe to toe about the naked dodgeball group date from the from last week. I just can't believe I have to read that too. He obviously uh, went home. Shock. Yosef may have spoiled the night for the other guys, but don't worry. Dale was there to make her feel better. And that means once again, it's time for America Loves Ted. <laughs> Joining us from Bachelor headquarters is Ted. Good morning. Okay. Ted, before you begin, I just want to editorialize for just a second. I get it. I mean, we debated this naked dodgeball thing within our own group uh, for a while. But I will say this. It, be, it comes across as a little bit of an eye roll. You're on The Bachelorette. I mean, you know what I mean? The pearl clutching when you're, when you're on a show known for uh, excessive drinking and making out and fantasy suites. Spare me the trip to the fainting couch. Well, and the thing with Yosef, he wasn't even on that date. Yeah. So it's like, what are you, what, what are you doing? You just pick your battles. This wasn't one, but um, I think he had some concerns. I think he said them, and then it just kind of, he just kept going, and he just kept going. And I was like, at some point, it was like, okay. You, but, it, yeah. but again, he's not wrong. I mean, I, right. I thought it was a little tacky, yep. but you're on a show that had a guy in a windmill having sex with like 40 people. Right. I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> the, the, I, I mean, come on, Barbara. Right. Yeah, anyway. Okay, so what happened after that? So, so Claire is distraught, right? I mean, and who wouldn't be yeah. after Yosef comes after him? Um, but Dale came in at the right moment and is comforting her, and it turns out to be like the best thing ever. She's like, they're like canoodling and stuff in like the courtyard and they are all over each other. Oh, wow. See? <laughs> Example. What did I just say, Ted? Exhibit A. Right there. Right there. And, and she's basically like, after that point, she's like, I think I might be in love with Dale. And this is, just to give people a timetable if they don't watch the show, this is after what, Ted? Two days? Three days? Oh, yeah. One week, maybe? Okay. Maybe? Wow. Okay. The next day was a group date. What happened? Did it, did well, it go well? Claire was still broken up over the Yosef thing. Yeah. So she spent all day just like thinking about Dale and how could Yosef say this to her. So she's, so the guys are ready for the group date. Uh, they're sitting on their couches and they're just waiting. And she comes in and she's like, we're going to skip the day portion of this and we're just going to go to the night. So they were waiting for hours. And then they start the group date, and then Dale steals her. They go to her bedroom, and they make out for an hour while the other guys are sitting there. Uh, okay. No wonder. No wonder she leaves the show early. Uh, well, yeah. uh, spoiler alert. Okay, so then they had another They had another group date, and this one was a roast? Like, what, a pig roast? or what? I don't know who thought this was a good idea, but it was the roast of Claire. No. Uh, oh, like a friar's roast. She can't take a joke but so they didn't they didn't roast her they were smart they did not make jokes about Claire cuz yeah but they made all their jokes because they have an audience there and Dale was part of the audience because they have no other people there Dale was the butt of all the jokes take a look Dale your last name's Moss right I think the only reason teams were signing you is cuz they thought Randy Moss was your dad <laughs> what's one thing y'all don't know about Dale <laughs> Nothing, because he doesn't shut the f up. Where, oh where, 
do I begin? Oh, take it, take, take it. How long do you really think it's going to take Claire to figure out that you're here trying to campaign for president and actually have no interest in her? <laughs> Zing. <laughs> okay. Really? Zing? <laughs> really? That is such, no, I, it, that is such a Ted soundbite. Zing. They, and none of their jokes were funny. No. <laughs> but Zing guy thought he was funny. And she was livid afterwards. She even said, they're making fun of my fiance. Okay. And we're like, Now what? see, I started the segment defending her and now I'll end it. I lighten up. Again, as I said to the guy that left, you're on The Bachelorette on ABC. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, speaking of her, last question. I spilled the beans. Well, everyone knew. She leaves the show. Are we coming to the end of her run? I think next week is the end of her run because they showed clips from next week and it's, you know, she's kind of coming in and telling them it's not their fault and Chris Harrison's like, this has never happened before. And then we, and there is Tasha. She's been in the pool this whole time. She's like a M. Night Shyamalan's the lady in the water. She's coming out with a soft focus. Ted, I, I don't want to beg, but why don't we have a soft focus on this show? You and I would look 30% better if I we know. had a soft focus. And if we just like came out of a pool. That would be great. We'll ask, Ted, let's ask Fox about that. Ted Johnson, everybody. It's chlorine. It's safe. Yeah. Not good for the skin, though. Stephanie Hansen's coming up next with Crocktober when we return. Back in a moment. Come on, Fox. Welcome back. It's almost November, but it's never too late to talk about Crocktober. Here with some of her favorite Crock-Pot recipes is the queen of the Crock-Pot and co-host of the Weekly Dish, my good friend and yours, Stephanie Hansen. Hi, Steph. Hi, guys. Okay. I, I, gotta, I could, like, hug my crack. Well, that'd be weird. So let's, and I got to call you Steph. There's a woman, I think her name's Evelyn. She doesn't like when I call you Hansen. So, yeah. I know. It's okay, Evelyn. When you're friends, you can call me just about anything. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, let, me, let me set this up with a compliment to you, Steph. You, are, you and your, the other Stephanie, uh, Stephanie March, you guys are the crock pot slow cooker queens of the upper Midwest, right? Because you, you have that Facebook club, right? We do. Stephanie would be so aghast that this is what she's becoming known for. But we started a group called the Weekly Dish Instant Potters because the Instant Pot, while a pressure cooker, is also a slow cooker. So many people are slow cooking in the instant pot. I love my crock pot so much, which is the same as a slow cooker. I couldn't give up, give it up. So I have two. Yep. I love you. And again, you know, I heard you on your show. You don't have enough cabinet space for what you have no. and you don't understand why your husband has an opinion on things, which was my favorite Stephanie quote in months. <laughs> why does my husband have an opinion on things? Yeah on everything in the house, every light, every fixture, where we're going to hang everything, every <laughs> fork. Who that, does that? Because that's Steph's new house there. OK, let's get started. Asian peanut pork is the first recipe. OK, and I actually made this, and it's in my crock pot. But I don't know if you can see in there. It looks so gross. Because <laughs> crock pot cooking is never super pretty, right? Yeah. This recipe is fantastic. It's peanut butter, it's onions, it's ginger, it's garlic. And then what I did is I shredded the pork and I made it into a pretty bowl. So you can have bowls, you can have um, on tortillas, you could have it on peanut noodles. It's just a delicious way to cook a uh, pork loin and it cooks itself really. You just peanut butter, onions, garlic, ginger, all these recipes are on the site. And then you just cook it overnight. Okay, let's move to candied walnuts. Something I never okay. thought you could make in a slow cooker stuff. Okay, you know how you go to the store and you buy these fancy nuts? I made these. So I just bought walnuts and then I put butter and brown sugar and a little bit of honey inside my crock pot. I cooked them for an hour. I stirred it all up. I put it on a flat pan so that they could kind of get hard and crystallize. And now when I want a salad with nuts or I want to have friends over, because nobody's having friends over, let's face it. But if I did, 
I'd put salt and rosemary on them and they'd be like a little snack. They're delicious. I love candied nuts. And wow. they're expensive in the store. They are real expensive. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, I love that recipe. That soup's easy. Okay, butternut squash soup. For people that don't okay. know, Stephanie is a soup queen as well. They did a whole episode last week on the weekly dish on soups. I love soup. And the reason I love soup is because I make it all the time. Because again, the instant pot and the crock pot. Squash soup is the easiest. The hardest part about squash soup is to get this skin off, right? So you can just peel it with a vegetable peeler. And then you cut this into cubes. And you put it in your crock pot with sage, with onions, with some apples. And you can rough chop it because you're going to end up blending everything. You can use butternut squash, which this is, or acorn squash, or even those ones that look like little hats, the short squat fat ones. Yeah. Doesn't matter. As long as you can get them cut up into chunks, you can put them in your crock pot, put the broth in there, and you're good to go. You just let it cook overnight. And then you get an immersion blender, which is like one of those sticks, and you go rah, 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 in there and you get it all soupy. Or you pour it into like a Vitamix or a blender, but be careful if you do that because it's hard to blend it when it's hot. Steph, you want to make sure you vent the top. How do you do the mixing again, Steph? I didn't catch that. How did you do it? <laughs> With your immersion blender, your hand immersion blender. It's one of my favorite tools. <laughs> it's one of mine too, Steph. All the recipes yeah. Steph mentioned will be listed, as she said, on our Facebook page. Just search for Jason Show TV and just trust me, we'll get the recipes up. And then you can find them It'll at be up. Yeah, and stephaniesdish.com. What's that, Steph? We have just a few seconds here. Yeah, this is a cookbook that if you like close, slow cooking, you should get it. Make it fast, cook it slow. It's one of the best. There we go. We're not done with Stephanie. We are turning our popular segment, Best Thing, uh, best thing Ever, over to Stephanie. What are her best things? You're going to find out when we come back. For this. Welcome back to the show, my friends. We're back with my friend, Stephanie Hansen. We're trying something new uh, that I'm really, I'm really excited about, and I think you're going to like this. Uh, for seasons, many seasons, you've seen me share my best things ever. Well, now it's our guest's turn. We're going to turn this segment over to some of our favorite guests, and Stephanie is kicking it off with three of her best things ever. Uh, Steph, thank you first for doing this. I think people are really. Sure. Gonna, I think people are going to re really enjoy this. So, give me your first one, which is Cheryl's nut butters. <laughs> okay, Cheryl is a local lady. She makes these in Minnetonka, and they're nut butters. And the reason they're so good and so much better than like the nut butter you get in the co-op is that she's really making them fresh, like almost to order. And there's a massive difference in taste and texture. So this one is nutty monkey butter. And it has banana chips and there's no gunk in it. So it's literally just ground up peanuts, the banana chips, no sugar, no added oils. I mean, this is so delicious. I almost can't stop much, eating it. How much monkey is in it though? How much monkey? A lot of monkey for your butter. Yeah. This is great. Um, what's the next one? Yeah, what's that flavor? What's that one? Okay, so this one is an almond butter with chocolate and coconut almond chunks. They have oh. one, she has rosemary, which is great for like, if you're gonna do savory dishes or like the peanut noodles, I used it for the peanut, um, Asian peanut sauce that I made for the pork in the crock pot. Yeah. I use Cheryl's nut butters, they're fantastic. Oh, Steph, that yeah. is a W, capital W winner. I've never heard Case, of it. I've never heard of it. You need to get this one. Okay. You're gonna love it. Okay. Nutty monkey butter. There we go, with just 2% monkey. Uh, Cheryl's Nut Butters is her first one. Next, uh, Succotash Retro, what? Yes, okay, so every day at, on Saturdays after I do my radio show, I go by 781 Raymond and I visit this store called Succotash Retro. And it's a lady and her husband that run the store and they have like funky mod mid-century modern and retro housewares, barware, dishware. So this is a dance pot that I got that I'm just in love with. Um, these are so cool. This is like a trivet. That's awesome. So when you cook. I love the, yeah. Steph, I love the lid. I love the design of the lid. It's really cool. And they have like small housewares, bar glasses that are retro. And you know, I do a lot of entertaining when it's not COVID season. 
And so I like to have special dishes, dishes for special things. She's got beautiful linens. I just, I literally go there every Saturday and look for stuff. She, I'm a regular. I just, I think they do a great job. They have a great eye and the prices are really reasonable if you like shopping for vintage and retro items, but Succotash Retro. And we are all about supporting the local boutiques right now. They're, they're gonna get, they're gonna save us and get us out of this. And finally, um, you have some ciders. I do. So this is Milk and Honey Ciders and they have a farm that's in St. Joseph. They are only making cider with Minnesota heirloom apples. So these are apples that maybe were grown in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. So they're not these big gigantic apples. They're super flavorful instead. And they turn it into hard cider. Hard cider is kind of like a sparkling white wine that's a little bit sweet if you get the right kind. So I would recommend this for Thanksgiving. They also have a 1.5 liter bag. And I drank the bag all summer at the cabin. I just brought the bag. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but if you're more sophisticated and you want to pour it out of this really pretty bottle, feel free. Um, it's milk and honey ciders. They also have a cidery on their grounds and they do events in the summertime and they're just great. Milk and honey ciders. It's a family company in St. Joseph. This is great. Now I I'm going to try to cover all bases. We will put this on our Facebook page because inevitably we will get a ton of emails. What was this thing Stephanie was talking about? And what was this thing? We will put this segment on our Facebook page, just click videos uh, and we'll put this a little bit later. And to get Steph's crock pot recipes, head to stephaniesdish.com. Before we go, is that this is your new house, right, that we're looking at? It is. It's not super organized. And in fact, the cable man is here and like cut the cable right before I was supposed to go live. I was like, stop, I'm going on TV. <laughs> I'm sure it's a little crazy around here. I'm sure. I'm sure you looked totally stable when you were doing that. Steph. Oh, always looking stable. That's me. Stable Stephanie, as that, you know. That's right. Thank you, Steph. I appreciate it. Bye, guys. Bye, sweetheart. Uh, more best things ever for with our guests uh, coming up all season long. Right now, coming up after this, more show, more Kendall, more fun. We'll be right back. That uh, was great. Welcome back to the show, everybody. We always try to answer a question or two from our social media in this little segment. Brenda wrote to us within the hour with our favorite question or comment of the day. You ready for it, Kendall? Yep. Brenda writes, I like Ted, comma, and you always know when there's but. a comma. I like Ted, comma, but can someone help him with his ties? I say this all the time to him. Ted, all the time. Ted tries. TT, yeah. Ted tries. They match well, though. I mean, he he's just got to tighten the little thing. He looks good. The Ted, leave Brittany and Ted alone. That's right. <laughs> Free Ted. It's his trademark. That's right. Uh, you can catch our show if you miss it live on YouTube. There's our channel right there. Search for Jason Show uh, TV and hit that subscribe button. A lot of you are asking about Stephanie's uh, Facebook group. You're going to have to stay tuned because I'll tell you what it is when we come back. Back after this. <laughs> The best parts of the show is the fact that we're live. We can react to things immediately, like Brenda, not real sure about Ted's ties. And, <laughs> and breaking news, I just read, the Star Tribune just announced, City Pages is stopping publication immediately. Uh, City Pages has been a fixture on newsstands for decades around the Twin Cities. Their, their best of issue uh, makes news all around Minnesota. They couldn't sustain ad revenue when clubs and restaurants and bars are closed, and sadly, 20, 30 people are out of a job. So I wish all of them well, fellow journalists. Um, it's, it was an influential magazine for many, 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 many years here. I love City Pages. Yeah, so uh, just sending love out to the uh, folks that just lost their job. Switching gears before we go, a lot of you uh, on social media are asking me to repeat Stephanie Hansen's uh, slow cooker Facebook group, and it is called The Weekly Dish Instant Potters, as in Harry. The uh, Weekly Dish T. Instant Potters. Go to Facebook, look for it, and join the group. You know why? Not only because it's great, but it'll drive Stephanie March crazy. Because she gets all the <laughs> notifications when there are new uh, mm -hmm. members. 
And she always goes, Hanson must have been on Jason again. So yeah, <laughs> so go join the group right now. Tomorrow on The Jason Show, one of the most popular guests of our show is back, Aaron Meyer from Lemons Lavender Laundry returns with ways to make over your entryway for pennies on the dollar, plus how to do shiplap yourself. That's tomorrow. Go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.